Hyperboloid structures are architectural structures designed using a hyperboloid in one sheet. Often these are tall structures such as towers where the hyperboloid geometry's structural strength is used to support an object high off the ground. But hyperboloid geometry is also often used for decorative effect as well as structural economy. The first hyperboloid structures were built by Russian engineer Vladimir Shukov. The world's first hyperboloid tower is located in Polobino, Dankovsky District, Lipsk Oblast, Russia. Properties Hyperbolic structures have a negative Gaussian curvature, meaning they curve inward rather than outward or being straight. As doubly ruled surfaces, they can be made with a lattice of straight beams. Hence are easier to build than curved surfaces that do not have a ruling and must instead be built with curved beams. Hyperboloid structures are superior in stability towards outside forces compared to straight buildings, but have shapes often creating large amounts of unusable volume and therefore are more commonly used in purpose-driven structures, such as water towers, cooling towers, and aesthetic features. With cooling towers, a hyperbolic structure is preferred. At the bottom, the widening of the tower provides a large area for installation of fill to promote thin film evaporative cooling of the circulated water. As the water first evaporates and rises, the narrowing effect helps accelerate the laminar flow, and then as it widens out, Contact between the heated air and atmospheric air supports turbulent mixing. Work of Shukov In the 1880s, Shukov began to work on the problem of the design of roof systems to use a minimum of materials, time and labor. His calculations were most likely derived from mathematician Pafnuty Chebyshev's work on the theory of best approximations of functions. Shukov's mathematical explorations of efficient roof structures led to his invention of a new system that was innovative both structurally and spatially. By applying his analytical skills to the doubly curved surfaces Nikolai Lobachevsky named hyperbolic, Shukov derived a family of equations that led to new structural and constructional systems, known as hyperboloids of revolution and hyperbolic paraboloids. The steel grid shells of the exhibition pavilions of the 1896 All-Russian Industrial and Handicrafts Exposition in Nizhny Novgorod were the first publicly prominent examples of Shukov's new system. Two pavilions of this type were built for the Nizhny Novgorod Exposition, one oval in plan and one circular. The roofs of these pavilions were doubly curved grid shells formed entirely of a lattice of straight angle iron and flat iron bars. Shukov himself called them as Hernia Bashnia. The patent of this system, for which Shukov applied in 1895, was awarded in 1899. Shukov also turned his attention to the development of an efficient and easily constructed structural system for a tower carrying a large gravity load at the top, the problem of the water tower. His solution was inspired by observing the action of a woven basket holding up a heavy weight. Again, it took the form of a doubly curved surface constructed of a light network of straight iron bars and angle iron. Over the next 20 years, he designed and built close to 200 of these towers, no two exactly alike, most were with heights in the range of 12 meters to 68 meters. At least as early as 1911, Shukov began experimenting with the concept of forming a tower out of stacked sections of hyperboloids. Stacking the sections permitted the form of the tower to taper more at the top, with a less pronounced waist between the shape-defining rings at bottom and top. Increasing the number of sections would increase the tapering of the overall form, to the point that it began to resemble a cone. By 1918 Shukov had developed this concept into the design of a nine-section stacked hyperboloid radio transmission tower for Moscow. Shukov designed a 350 meters tower, which would have surpassed the Eiffel Tower in height by 50 meters, while using less than a quarter of the amount of material. His design, as well as the full set of supporting calculations analyzing the hyperbolic geometry and sizing the network of members, 
was completed by February 1919. However, the 2,200 tons of steel required to build the tower to 350 meters were not available. In July 1919, Lenin decreed that the tower should be built to a height of 150 meters and the necessary steel was to be made available from the army's supplies. Construction of the smaller tower with six stacked hyperboloids began within a few months, and Shukov Tower was completed by March 1922. Other architects, Antony Gordy and Shukov, carried out experiments with hyperboloid structures practically simultaneously, but independently, in 1880-1895. Antony Gordy used structures in the form of hyperbolic paraboloid and hyperboloid of revolution in the Sagrada Familia in 1910. In the Sagrada Familia, there are a few places on the Nativity façade, a design not equated with Gordy's ruled surface design, where the hyperboloid crops up. All around the scene with the pelican, there are numerous examples. There is a hyperboloid adding structural stability to the cypress tree. The bishop's mitre spires are capped with hyperboloids. In the Palau Guel, there is one set of interior columns along the main façade with hyperbolic capitals. The crown of the famous parabolic vault is a hyperboloid. The vault of one of the stables at the church of Colonia Guel is a hyperboloid. There is a unique column in the park Guel that is a hyperboloid. The famous Spanish engineer and architect Eduardo Torroja designed a thin shell water tower in Fedala and the roof of Hippodrome, Zizuela, in the form of hyperboloid of revolution. Le Corbusier and Felix Candela used hyperboloid structures. A hyperboloid cooling tower was patented by Frederick Van Itterson and Gerard Kuypers in 1918. The Georgia Dome was the first hypertensigrity dome to be built.